What's up guys, I am Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to install a wide ratio transmission kit on your KTM or Husqvarna 450cc dirt bike. Now with this kit, the install process will be similar for your KTM 450SXFs, your 450XCFs, and your Husqvarna FC450s, as well as the FX450s. But whatever bike you're working on, make sure you type in your year, make, and model when you order this kit to make sure you get the correct parts. To do this job, we're gonna be wearing safety glasses. We have our rubber gloves, some rags, regular snap ring pliers, and the type of snap ring pliers with a flat tip. We're also using a small punch and small screwdriver, and we've printed off the OEM parts diagram just to help with reassembly. Now, as far as parts go, we have two different kits. So the 16 to 18 450s, they're gonna come with the two sixth gears. They're gonna come with snap rings. You've got a washer, needle bearing, and your shift drum. Now the 19 and newer models, they're gonna come with fifth and sixth gear, as well as the snap rings, a washer, needle bearing, your counter shaft, and the shift drum. Now, if you need help getting to this point and you don't have your engine torn down yet, make sure you check out our engine rebuilding series for the KTM and Husqvarna 450cc dirt bikes. And we're gonna guide you through those steps to get to this point. Now, if you look at the transmission shafts, these spacers are where our sixth gears are gonna go. So on the counter shaft, that's gonna be our two, four slider. And on the main shaft, it's gonna be the spacer. So the counter shaft, it's gonna be a little more work to get to this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this end of this counter shaft into the soft jaws in our vise, and that's gonna make it easier to work on. And we're putting just a minimal pressure on that shaft. We just don't want it to fall out. Now we're gonna start disassembling things to get to that two, four slider. And as you take things off, make sure you keep track of how these are installed so you can reinstall everything back in the same orientation you took it off. So we've got our washer. Now we can remove our first gear, needle bearing. Then we have another washer. Now we'll remove the fifth gear. And then right here where you have a snap ring, and then use my flat snap ring pliers to remove it. Then we'll remove a splined washer Next, we'll remove third gear. Now we'll remove the fourth gear. And then on these bearings, they just split right in the middle. You can work those off. Another washer. And we've got one more snap ring. And as you remove these snap rings, make sure you pay attention some of them will have a slightly more rounded side than the other. So when you install this new snap rings, make sure you install them the same way these came off. Now that we've removed our 2.4 slider, this is as far as you need to go if you have a 2016 to 2018 bike and you can go ahead and skip to reassembly. But for the 2019 and newer bikes, you're gonna need to completely disassemble this shaft. So. The next step for us is to remove the snap ring and the washer. Last for our bike, we'll remove the second gear. Just be real careful with this bearing. You don't wanna break that cage. So right here, we have our new counter shaft. You can see this older one has the wider splines. That's why we had to switch to this other style of counter shaft. So first thing we need to do is make sure all our parts are clean. If you have any dirty parts, make sure you spray them off with some contact cleaner. And then we're gonna lube everything up as we assemble. So we've got some assembly lube on our needle bearing. And if you notice any parts that are damaged, definitely get them replaced. So we've got our needle bearing on, and then we're ready for second gear. Again, pay attention to the orientation. 
this side that is cut out is going to be facing up. This next step, we're going to vary from the manual just a little bit. So the 500s, they had just this regular stop disc next to that second gear with no splines on it. But our bike actually had a spline washer next to that gear. So we're going to run it like that. And the whole theory behind that is just we don't want this rotating with the gear and wearing into the snap ring and possibly causing it to pop off. So it's up to you what you want to do there. But again, we're running the spline washer. And with this, we're making sure the square edge is facing up. Now for the snap ring, there is a square side and a rounded side. The square side you want facing away from the freewheeling gear. And that way, if you get any load pressing on this, the square edge is gonna hold nice and tight in that groove and it's less likely to pop out. And when we install the snap ring, we're just gonna spread it the minimal amount. You don't wanna overexpand it. I'm just gonna press it down and make sure it's fully seated. Now, one more thing with the snap ring, you wanna make sure those ears are supported on the splines. And that's just one more thing you can do to make sure that it doesn't pop off. Next, we're gonna install our sixth gear. This is gonna replace the 2-4 selector and the gear side of this is gonna be facing down. And one more thing before we get everything back together, you know, you can watch our transmission inspection video if you want more details on inspecting all the parts. But one thing you do need to be aware of is making sure these gear dogs are in good condition and you're just looking to make sure that there's a nice square edge on both sides. And same thing with the corresponding slots in the gears. All right, so six gear going on. We've got the gears facing down and the slot for the shift fork facing up. And we'll install another snap ring. Again, the square edge is gonna be facing away from the freewheeling gear. So in this case, the square edge is facing down. Same thing with our washer. Then we've got our needle bearing. One more needle bearing. After that, we have our fourth gear and this collar side this is going to be facing up. You can see the difference. Then we've got our third gear and the collar side is going to be facing down. Then we'll install the washer and snap ring. For the 19 and newer bikes, this is where it's going to differ again a little bit. So we're not reusing the same fifth gear. Get that out of there and we'll install the new fifth gear. And the groove for the shift fork is going to be facing down. Then we've got a washer, a needle bearing. first gear and another washer. Now moving on to the main shaft, we've got a washer on the end and we've got our second gear spacer. Now if you're doing the 2016 to 2018 bikes, this is where you can go ahead and install that sixth gear freewheeling gear. But for us, we need to go all the way down since we also have to replace the fifth gear. As we take this apart, again, just pay attention to the orientation of everything. 
So this is fourth and third gears. And we'll use our snap ring pliers. Remove the snap ring. Remove our washer and our fifth gear. Now, if any of your parts were dirty, you definitely want to spray them off and clean them up. For us, we're going to start by lubing up this bearing. Make sure that all these needles are in good condition. If there's any question about any of these parts and their condition, make sure you get them replaced. And we're using all new snap rings as we go back together. Now we've got our new fifth gear. Make sure you don't mix it up with the old one. We'll apply some assembly lube to it. We've got those gear dogs facing up. Now again, with the washers and snap rings, make sure the square edges are facing away from this freewheeling gear. So we've got that splined washer just spreading that snap ring the minimal amount, press it down into place. And then with the ends of the snap ring, I'm just rotating it. So these are supported on the splines. We don't have a big piece just hanging out in the open. And that just ensures that you have more support and the snap ring is less likely to come off. Next we'll install the three, four slider. The fourth or larger gear is gonna be facing up. And this snap ring, the square edge is actually gonna face down. All right, this is where things start to get a little different. So we had the spacer on there before, but now we're gonna be installing a new splined washer. And we've got the needle bearing that came in our kit. And then our sixth gear, with these dogs facing down. Then we'll install second gear and that little recessed side that's gonna be facing up. That's where your washer is gonna sit into. And last but not least, the washer. Now is the moment of truth. We've got both transmission shafts back together and we need to make sure they mesh in all of the gear sets. And it's looking like ours does. If yours doesn't match up, you need to go back through and find out what you did wrong. Now moving on to the shift drums, you have a gear position indicator. This lets the gear position sensor know what gear you're in. We just need to transfer that over to our new shift drum. So to do that, I'm using this small punch there's two tabs on each side you can press in on. I'm just gonna press in on one. We're gonna pry this out with a screwdriver. It shouldn't take too much pressure. So I'm just gonna twist on that screwdriver. Should pop right out. So for the new shift drum, this can only go in one way. We've got our uh, locating tab right there. So we'll just pop that into place. And from here, we are ready to get this installed back to our engine. And if you need help with that, make sure you check out our engine rebuild series for the KTM and Husqvarna 450s. That's gonna guide you through all those steps. Now, if you need any parts for your bike, including these transmission kits, check out our website. We have those on there. And if you wanna see more helpful content like this, subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.